And here we are again. Elon has surprised the industry with another stroke. We cannot call it a master stroke as Musk can face a great number of losses and Tesla can lose against other competitors like Toyota or Ford in the EV market. Is it some kind of technique of Musk to bluff with the others? Or will this be the move for Tesla? Here at Tech Addicts, let's get all the updates regarding this. Tesla's significant price cuts in the United States and Europe, which followed on the heels of two rounds of reductions in China over the course of 10 weeks, can be interpreted in a number of different ways. For those who look at the world through a pessimistic lens, it is obvious that the automobile manufacturer was having trouble generating orders. Although the disparity is not catastrophic, it is part of a trend that is not typical for Tesla, which is that the firm produced over 34,000 more vehicles than it delivered in the fourth quarter. After all, CEO Elon Musk told investors back in October that the business anticipated selling every car it could produce for as long into the future as we can see. Tony Sakanagi, a Bernstein analyst who has the equivalent of a sell recommendation on the stock, wrote to clients on Tuesday that Tesla's recent price drops were a response to a demand problem. Although we and many other investors had anticipated price reductions, such reductions were deeper than we had anticipated and happened far sooner than we had anticipated. The optimists believe that Elon Musk has just started a pricing war that Tesla has a good chance of winning, even if it is highly unlikely that Tesla will emerge from this conflict undamaged. There is no question that cutting the price of the Model Y by 20% and cutting the price of performance variants of the Model S and Model X by around $20,000 would put pressure on profitability. But Tesla is earning significantly more than other electric vehicle firms, and with the exception of BYD in China, no other car maker comes anywhere close to producing as many electric cars as Tesla does. According to John Murphy, an analyst at Bank of America, who has the equivalent of a hold recommendation on the electric vehicle manufacturer's shares, Tesla has greater margins than other OEMs, including GM and Ford, and cushion to cut prices even further. The majority of original equipment manufacturers are now making a loss on electric vehicles, and these price cuts are expected to make the business even more difficult at a time when they are striving to ramp up production of electric vehicle products. Should the pricing of electric vehicles prove to be less advantageous, original equipment manufacturers will need to reevaluate their investments and determine whether or not they provide acceptable returns. During the height of the Great Recession, which began approximately 15 years ago, Tesla came dangerously close to declaring bankruptcy. After that, the company expanded in part because of an extended era of cheap interest rates, simple access to cash, and a lack of rivalry in the market. That has completely shifted. As a result of rate hikes by the Federal Reserve, the cost of borrowing money has increased, and Tesla is no longer the only option available. BYD is making significant headway in China, Volkswagen is exerting significant effort to defend its position in Europe, and Ford and General Motors are doing the same thing in the United States. After the company fell short of its aim for growth in vehicle deliveries in the previous year, Musk is determined to position Tesla for continuous expansion so that the company can continue to thrive. By lowering the prices of Model 3 and Y, a greater number of those models will become qualified for the new tax credits that have been made available in the United States as a result of the Inflation Reduction Act. Musk forecast a severe recession for this year during a conversation on Twitter spaces that took place one month ago. He also cautioned that people will reduce their spending on expensive items. He referred to the combination of increasing financing rates and decreased demand as a double whammy and stated that Tesla has a choice to make. Do you wish to increase your unit volume, in which case you will need to alter your prices downward, or are you more interested in maintaining a stable level of growth? That was a rhetorical question, Musk. If I had a predisposition, it would be to argue that we ought to grow as rapidly as we possibly can without putting the company in jeopardy. Assuming that its financial situation is in good shape, Tesla's CEO predicted that the company's profitability would be lower to negative during the economic downturn in the scenario described just now. Musk was quoted as saying, I think that's still the right decision long term. Talking about future plans Elon Musk has for Tesla, or we can say the new master plan that Musk is working on, isn't quite ready yet. 
During the August meeting with stakeholders, questions were posed to Tesla's CEO regarding the company's five-year plan, as well as his most recent master plan. Despite the fact that he did not go into specifics, there is no question that Tesla has been a pioneer in the field of electric vehicles. The market, on the other hand, is becoming increasingly competitive as more well-established automobile manufacturers begin to increase the production of electric vehicles. Investors in the crowd were interested in hearing Tesla's strategy for competing with other companies. Vieca reiterated the numbers that were presented on Tesla's earnings call for the second quarter. In the past seven years, there has been a reduction of more than half in the amount of the product's construction costs. He stated that the price of producing one of their vehicles was $84,000 in 2017, but that it has since been reduced to $36,000. Incredibly, these cost savings were not the result of better batteries or supplies, but rather of improved vehicle designs and optimized factory operations. According to Vieca, the most important indicator to keep an eye on is the cost of producing each individual vehicle. It determines the maximum size Tesla can get as well as the maximum number of vehicles it can be produced. He made it clear that the business will keep looking for new ways to cut down on the cost of production. The interest in a Tesla model with lower prices continues to increase, despite the fact that production costs are decreasing. Even if the phrase Model 2 was not used in the report, it's not a secret that this has been on the company's radar for some time. Vieca claims that the business's long-term goal is to become a high-volume automaker. In light of this, there is a requirement for a more cost-effective alternative to be included in their portfolio. However, because there is such a persistently strong demand for the Model 3 and the Model Y, a new model is not required any time in the near future. This is an extremely important aspect, because the head of investor relations stated that a Tesla model with lower production costs would be used in the production of the robo-taxi. Naturally, the investors required some reassurance that full self-driving would be successful. Musk has claimed in a public statement that FSD has the potential to significantly increase the value of the company. According to Vieca, the supervised FSD is now being carried out. And according to him, there are more than 100,000 people in the United States who use FSD. On the other hand, he emphasized the idea that the data collection process is the only way for the system to become more effective. It's also noteworthy to note that Vieca gave each Tesla product a generation number. Model S and Model X make up the first generation of Tesla vehicles, while the Model 3 and the Model Y are both parts of the second generation. When he talked about the third generation, he was referring to RoboTaxi and, most likely, Model 2. However, given that the Tesla Semi is now operational and that the Cybertruck is scheduled to be released in the next year, it is possible that he will wish to alter the generation breakdown before the subsequent investor meeting. Tesla is driving the traditional insurance sector to provide better prices for Tesla vehicles by utilizing a novel approach to auto insurance, which is causing the market to undergo significant disruption. Additionally, Tesla is able to develop its goods because of the vital information that it is provided by the company's insurance division. At the end of the previous year, Tesla Insurance announced that its annual premium run rate was $300 million and that it was growing at a pace of 20% every quarter. It is rapidly establishing itself as a prominent competitor in the market. To accelerate the advent of sustainable transport and electric technology. That's all for the video today. We'll be right back. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching.